Hi, my name is Alex with Dave Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be sharing some of the best practices for Kanban users in Jira. More specifically, we're going to be talking about WIP, the work in progress limits, and I'm going to be giving you a couple of helpful tips and tricks for making your usage and interactions with your Kanban boards that much better. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value to this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. This video is part of the Summer of Atlassian 2.0 series, which means that we need your help. We need you to smash the subscribe button as we are trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the summer. And I can only do that if you smash that subscribe button. Also make sure you like, comment, and share this video with as many people as you can, as we're also trying to double our viewers by 2X. So make sure you share some love, click around, and let's make this video blow up. Also, this video doesn't have an official sponsor, so if you're looking to get your your apps or your plugins in front of over 70,000 monthly viewers. Highly recommend you get a hold of me on LinkedIn so we can chat about how you can sponsor this Friday series. All right, let's jump into a Kanban board inside of Jira and talk about some of the cool things that you might not be considering as a Kanban user. Now, when you are using a Kanban board in Jira, I want you to consider that the restrictions are a lot less. The scrum boards in Jira have a lot of rules. There's a lot of governance that goes into helping you follow the way of scrum. I wouldn't say to a T, but it helps. There's a lot of guardrails. But in Kanban, you out of the box, you only get the board. And so it could be very underwhelming, right? Like I feel like the experience is very like, huh, what is this, right? Like you're like, what do I do here? And so I'm gonna show you a couple of tips and tricks for how to like augment your experience in Kanban a little bit more because with a little bit of just help, you can really drastically improve your experience with a Kanban style of project. And the biggest thing that we can talk about is when you have your Kanban board, you want to set up what's called a WIP, a work in progress limit. Because when your team is just working on stuff and because of the nature that all of your issues inherently just come into your board, especially when you don't have the backlog enable, you're going to be overwhelmed by the sheer amount of work that your team has to work on. It's just going to be hundreds and hundreds of issues. And it can be just your team's going to have a hard time figuring out where's the beginning. So one step one is enable your backlog so that when you do create issues, they go to the backlog and they don't overburden your board. Once you do have issues on your board, the next big question and the focus of this video is how much in, in Scrum, we have this concept of story points. We have this concept of estimating the level of effort so that we can not overburden ourselves. I like to explain to people that the story points basically let us be like Goldilocks. They let us figure out, are we too hot, too cold, or just right? Have we taken on too much work? But in Kanban, you don't get that benefit. You don't get the ability to estimate your story points. I mean, you can still use story points if you wanted to. It's a field in your Jira, but the UI is not going to display it to you, and you're not going to be able to make strategic decisions, tactical decisions, based on those story points. So what do you do then? So... Kanban or Jira gives you in the Kanban board gives you this thing called a whip, a work in progress limit. And this is designed to basically help you and your team be more efficient. What, whatever you do, you can't multitask. You can't like end world hunger and you can't boil the ocean. And so you got to be prescriptive. Your team has to pick only a certain amount. And by placing these work in progress limits, as you can see, this one has a max of 10. We can then help our team be more focused multitask less and reduce bottlenecks because they're not going to try to boil the ocean each and every week. And so these limits are going to keep your team in check. They're going to help them essentially stay focused and finish the most important tasks, knowing that you can only do so much every week. Now, how do we calculate the whip? How do we calculate what this number should be? There's no silver bullet here. There is no one size fits all. This is going to vary from team to team. But I recommend that in a agile sense, you just try something. Try 10, try 20, try 30. But keep in mind that the whip is not for one individual, but rather for the entire team. So maybe start with giving everybody the ability to do two or three tasks at any given time. And so multiply two to three times the number of people on your team. And you're going to be able to generate a number 
that should at least be your first gauge of like, okay, now let's just try 10, let's try 20, right? You run through it for a week or two, and then you come back and you, you have a retrospective. Even though Kanban methodologies don't have retrospectives, you can for sure still have a moment of reflection and go, hey, we all gave you the ability to work on at least 10 concurrent tasks. Was that too much? Was that too little? What are we getting here? And let your team guide you. Let the output of your team help you determine what your whip should be because you don't want to end up in one of these two scenarios, right? You don't want to make the whip so high that your team's always looking like they're underperforming because if your whip is like 50, but your team can really only do 30, then that 20 is going to make you feel like they're being lazy, but maybe their performance or their actual, their ability to work on stuff is 30 issues at a, at a time. And so you want to make sure that that number is not just like a vanity metric. You want to make sure that that number is meaningful and that it, it does stretch your team, right? You also don't want the inverse effect. You don't want to set up 10 when you know your team can knock out 20 because then from a performance and moral perspective, or that's just not going to help your team at all, right? And so you want to have a very realistic number and you want to use facts and data, but you also just want to be careful not to turn your whip into a vanity. You don't want them to just be the number that they have to hit because it's what management said. And so you want to be very, very careful. You want to make sure that your team is encouraged to challenge each other, to go above and beyond, and to make sure that they're molding and modifying, adjusting this number as their needs uh, change. For example, what if it's a holiday coming up? You don't want them to be working on the same amount of stuff, right? What if your company shuts down for a week like during the holidays? Well, it doesn't make sense to grade them against the same amount or number. So you want to make sure that you are considering all these factors when you're trying to figure out what should my maximum be. Also keep in mind that not all tasks are created equal. Not every task is gonna be the same. Some tasks are going to be super complex. Some tasks are gonna be super easy. But because we don't have story points in Kanban, it could be a little bit challenging to capture this information. So, but you are gonna to wanna to consider that because just because somebody can do 20 super easy tasks and another individual is doing one really, really hard one because you're not in scrum, because you're not using story points, it can be hard to gauge that. And so if you're finding yourself in those situations where like some person's like knocking out 20, 30 tasks at a time and another poor soul is only knocking out two, but they're like creating, they're lifting the whole weight of the project then you might want to consider going to Scrum so that you can then start using your story points so you can start evaluating your level of effort and maybe start decomposing that work because in Scrum, it's kind of easy to help you determine, hey, this might should be an epic because it's just too big. But because you don't have those story points in Kanban, it could be harder to gauge. It could be harder to go, hmm, this task that I thought was a task should really be something bigger. And because epics don't really work the same way in Kanban as they do in, in Agile or in Scrum, then you run your, you run into some situations where you're just not going to be as efficient the moment you start scaling and get, taking on harder and harder things. But if your team's are just like, hey, we're all just doing basic work here. Nobody's trying to end world hunger. We're all just doing busy work type of situation. Now, no insults to anybody here. But if your just, team's just like, if they're in a flow and you just want to visualize what's going on with your team, how they're pushing work through, and there are not a lot of unknowns, then Kanban's gonna work wonders. But the moment that you start to have a lot of unknowns, the moment that you start seeing one member kind of fall behind more, I would recommend that you start evaluating how you can upgrade to Scrum and seeing if that helps you out at any way. Now, how do we actually adjust these things? How do we actually adjust our whips, right? And so it's really, really easy. All you gotta do is click on this board, ellipsis here, click on board settings, and then go to columns. Once you're inside of columns, you're gonna notice that for each of these columns here, you're gonna have a whip. You're gonna be able to set your minimum and your maximum. And I don't typically set my minimums. You can if you want to, so that you always basically force everybody to be working on one thing at a time, at least minimum or you can just leave it blank, it's not gonna matter. Because what is more important is the maximum. You don't want your team to try it again, end world hunger. You don't want them boiling the ocean. You don't want them taking on more work than they should because the whole point of Kanban is to stay focused, laser focused and throughput. You want them just taking an item and moving it through the workflow here. You don't want an individual to take on 10, 20, 30 different things because then they're just gonna be overburdened, they're gonna be distracted, they're gonna be multitasking, they're gonna do 1% of 10 things, which is like 10% of, at the end of the day, when they should be working on like 60, 70% of one task at a time, 
And so I do recommend that you, the, the max is the most important metric here. So if you ever need to modify it, just click on the little pencil here. You can change this. I do recommend, again, alter these from day to day, from week to week, so that it makes sense for you and your team. Now, the best practices for WIPs though, right, is recommend that you communicate, agree with your team. Don't just, don't let this be just like a director management decision, right? This should be a team effort. Make sure you all come together and make a number that works for you and your team. Enforce it as well. The Jira, when you exceed, when you go back to your board here and you bring in an 11th task, let me see if I got one here to show you. I'm just gonna create one here real quickly. Right, so when you bring in whatever, I'm just bringing something in and you bring it into your issue, you're gonna see that you have nine right now. I'm gonna bring a couple more just to exceed the max. Right, so I'm just gonna keep bringing them in here and see, so I have 10. When I go to 10, nothing happens because we, we just hit our max, we're good. But when I bring number 11, right, when I bring this one in and I plant it into my board here, I'm gonna, you're gonna see immediately that this turns into red because you've exceeded your max and then your entire column here turns red. You don't want this to happen, right? So, well, I mean, you do want this to happen because and then it tells you, hey, something's gotta change. We gotta we gotta kick something up because we, we just lost the balance. We just tipped the scales in the wrong direction. And so this big red thing is only gonna go away the moment that you bring it back down to 10. So you either push something back to the backlog or your team actually goes and starts working on it or completes that specific task to help you. So those are the things for you to uh, consider. Again, remember Kanban's are about efficiency. This is made after the Toyota way. This is made after manufacturing. And so it's all about throughput. It's all about getting things moving across, not so much strategy, not so much like the way Scrum works. And so you want to make sure that you are using this correctly. Well, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you smash the subscribe button as this is part of the Summer of Atlassian 2.0 and we are trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. So make sure you smash the subscribe button. Also make sure you like, share, and comment as we are trying to double our views here and that will help YouTube promote this video to even more people. And if you're looking for a place to sponsor, if you're looking for a place to advertise your amazing app in the Atlassian Marketplace, send me a message on LinkedIn or get a hold of me however you can here and let's chat. I do have one more opportunity open. I've spoken to a couple of people, but I haven't closed that last lead. So Friday is still open. So if you wanna sponsor those Friday videos, let me know and uh, let's, let's chat. All right, that's it for this video and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. the chase and the hunt and i set the pace when i'm running i always take what i want and i always give it 100 don't need